Hello students, today I am going to explain the first chapter that is nature of financial management. Let me introduce the topic. One of the few disciplines made a dramatic changes in the last century that is financial management. A radical changes in science and technology brought about significant changes in industrial and business practices. The demand of such changes in industrial and business practices created a necessary impact on financial management. Previous century began with a small group of investors making investment in corporate sector. The financial instruments were simple. But the century ended with a large body of investors making investment in corporate sectors. Then the financial instruments became complex. Between the beginning and end, the financial management transformed itself from theoretical discipline to the practical discipline. For the study of such a discipline, more mathematical and statistical models came to be incorporated and the surplus fund generated by the industry and business due to the quick execution of the projects, absorption of information technology etc. So the firm became profit center by generating the income through investing surplus fund in the outside securities. Therefore, the cash management became more sophisticated. Let me discuss about the meaning and definition of financial management. Hisra Solomon has given definition in theory of financial management. According to Hisra Solomon, financial management is concerned with the efficient use of an important economic resource that is capital funds. The term efficient use of funds cover many functions of financial management that is financing, investment, restructuring, consolidation etc. One more definition given by Pilipatas. According to Pilipatas, financial management is concerned with the managerial decisions that result in the acquisition and financing of long-term and short-term credits for the firm. As such, it deals with the situation that requires the selection of specific assets, the selection of specific liability as well as the problem of size and growth of an enterprise. When analyzing this definition, it is based on the expected inflow and expected outflow of funds and their effects upon the managerial objectives. The significance of this definition is the identification of functional areas of the financial management. It attributes the following functions to the discipline. They are raising long-term and short-term funds from various sources, acquiring assets that is capital budgeting and working capital management, decisions regarding the size of enterprise that is capacity planning, developing desired model for growth and basing the above decisions on the anal analysis of a fund flows. Finally, we can say that the financial management monitors and discover the plenty of opportunities. Next, I am going to explain the scope of financial management. That is, first one is traditional approach and the second one is modern approach. Let me discuss the traditional approach. This approach, the traditional approach gives the limited role to the financial management. The traditional approach is valid even in the present day where the scale of operation is small, profitability is limited, where promoters are not dynamic. The scope of the traditional approach is limited only to the following areas that I'll explain next. These areas were simple, originally complicated and more significant. 
let me discuss the areas of traditional approach first one is raising funds the operation of business creates demand for funds means funds are required to operate the business these funds raised from the various sources each source has cost and benefit so the finance manager selects the sources that gives maximum benefit to the organization if the organization comes under traditional approach have only limited number of sources this function becomes dynamic and significant by the firm that cultivates market friendly image such image helps to raise the funds from the investors to meet ever growing demand for the funds there are corporates which not raise the funds from the domestic investors but also from the investment markets in the world second one is external reporting in case of joint stock company there is the need to prepare annual accounts get them audited and send the copies of them to the governmental organizations and shareholders after the annual general body meeting dividend warrants are to be sent and the complaint regarding them should be attended to investing public analysts and academicians realizing the importance of this document the accounting bodies in each country have prescribed disclosure standards regulatory bodies like security exchange board of india provided guidelines for preparation and presentation of annual report in addition listed company required to prepare and publish quarterly financial statements these were unaudited they also can required to have limited audit review and the last one is institutions and instruments in addition to the above financial management studied institutions operating in capital market instruments that are used for mobilizing funds similarly instruments and institutional framework of money market also fall within the scope of financial management so these are all the areas comes under the traditional approach thank you